It's important when teaching our children to understand how they develop and grow into adulthood so that we can understand how to teach them. One aspect of this development is cognitive, how we think or how our minds work. Jean Piaget introduced a stage theory of cognitive development that explains how we move as children to adults as thinkers. Piaget's theory states that we constantly organize our thoughts and experiences into structures that he called schemata. This is how we come to understand the world around us. Our knowledge grows through the process of adaptation. We adapt new knowledge and experiences through the processes of assimilation and accommodation. In assimilation, we incorporate something new into something that we already know. However, if we receive new knowledge that conflicts with something we already know, we must accommodate and create a new schema to make sense of this new information. We must constantly balance these processes to learn new information and grow into adult. Understanding this process of development will help us motivate our students to learn. During the sensory motor stage, the child rapidly develops the ability to act on his or her environment. The primary accomplishments of this stage include the development of object permanence, which is the understanding that objects exist even when not seen or heard, imitation of the actions of others, ability to reverse an action, and the development of intentional behaviors. Characteristic of this stage, you may see infants repeat something that you do. For instance, if you smile, they will. They also like to throw something on the floor just to see you pick it up and then they throw it on the floor again. During the pre-operational stage, the child can move from schemata that are tied to physical actions to actions that are carried out mentally by thinking things through. This stage marks the transition to symbolic thought. Although they are still unable to perform mental experiments, they can think something through, but then they can't mentally reverse the process. They also have a tendency to focus on a single aspect of a problem. And they are generally considered to be egocentric. They can't see something from another's perspective. The thing to remember about children in this stage is that they need hands-on practice in basic skills to help them build up to the more complex skills they will need later on. During the concrete operational stage, they now have the ability to perform mental experiments. They can consider more than one aspect of a problem and solve hands-on problems logically. They can now group objects by common characteristics and arrange objects in an orderly fashion. The primary accomplishments of this stage is the development of conservation which is the realization that a change in the appearance of an object does not necessarily change the characteristics of the object. Conservation requires the development of three reasoning skills. Identity, when nothing is added or subtracted, the material is not changed. Compensation, a change in one dimension or direction can be balanced by a change in another dimension or direction and reversibility, the ability to conjecture what would happen if an action were reversed. When teaching children in this stage, it's important to remember that they still cannot deal with abstract concepts and that we should still use concrete objects and visual aids to help them. 
Also, long readings and presentations are difficult for students in this stage. So we as teachers need to break that up with periods of activity. Hands-on experience, graphic organizers, and models are still very helpful for students in this stage of cognitive development. It is also helpful to use a familiar example to help them draw a connection to something unfamiliar to them. This will help build deeper reasoning skills for later on. During the formal operational stage, students have a tendency to focus on their own beliefs and assume that everyone else is as interested in them as they are, which is known as adolescent egocentrism. They are capable of perceiving situations from different viewpoints. They are just often more interested in their own ideas. They do have the ability now to deal with abstract concepts. And they can also develop hypothetical deductive reasoning, which is the ability to consider a hypothetical situation and hypothesize implications through the use of logical reasoning. It's important to know that not everyone reaches the formal operational stage and that as teachers, we need to be on the lookout for signs that the students may be progressing into this stage of development. We can use more detailed and higher level graphic organizers. It's also helpful to provide opportunities for hypothetical situations, use design experience and solve problems, and discussions help build the skills for formal operational thinking. We should also relate the material to the students' personal lives by using popular music or movies things that the students are interested in, in order to get their attention. We must understand how our students develop if we are to engage them in the classroom, help them learn, and grow into adults. A theater classroom provides many ways to develop higher cognitive skills. My theater classroom will be comprised of mostly students in the formal operational stage. I will be able to help those students who have not yet reached that stage with many hands-on activities and discussion groups to develop higher reasoning skills and acquire new knowledge. This will make for a very engaging and active classroom. <laughs>